I, I do the calls ministry here at the church, and and one of the things that I, I guess I struggle with, um, and just seeing the shift of the culture and the way uh, even some churches are going. But you know, my question is, how do we maintain a balance between having a biblical standard, you know, having these real clear truths that we have as believers? But also not allowing those things to make us judgmental or, or pious or religious towards um, people, I guess is the best way I'd put it. Well, I, you know, it depends on what you mean by judgmental. What do you mean? Uh, I guess I would say that uh, I, 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 that's the, the vibe I get from other churches and other groups is that we're the judgmental one because, um, you know, because we present real clear truths. And so I, I, there's that vibe towards people, but I also just, I guess I want to have the right heart towards people. I don't want to have an issue, a, a deal where, um, I kind of look down on people. Is that, if that makes sense? So there's a balance, obviously, between you want to have a biblical standard, but you want to treat people like Jesus did. Right. Yeah. You know, so when, so when you look at, um, how Jesus treated people, I mean, that's a, that's a great example. Uh, when you look how, at how Jesus treated people, he did have a standard. And when he was dealing with somebody, that was um, obviously uh, under conviction of their sin. Mm-hmm. He's always gracious to them. Yeah. And so the woman caught in adultery is the classic example. You know, she's the Bible says that she was caught in the very act. Actually, the guys who brought her before Jesus said that she was caught in the very act of adultery. And so we know what that what that looks like. And so obviously, if you're caught in the act of adultery, there are two people, and she's the only one taken. Right. And brought before Jesus, and she's probably um, not uh, uh, clad very well at that point, and so uh, she's she's being uh, put out in front of people in a way that's completely embarrassing. And uh, of all people, um, she had reason to open her mouth and start shouting that it wasn't fair because mm-hmm. uh, the guy should have been there too, and um, she didn't. What she did was she just kept her mouth shut and she was waiting for stones to fall. She, she probably had a lifestyle that uh, was like that. And uh, she just figured that now she's caught and now, now it's all coming down on her and she didn't have anything to say. Yeah. And that's, that's a person who's just sitting there, you know, waiting for whatever God has for him at that point. And so uh, what God had for her was grace. And so Jesus deals with the guys who uh, brought her in front of him, and he deals with them judgmentally. Yeah. In the in the sense of, you know, you guys are all. First off, he doesn't even he doesn't even talk to them. They come up and say all this stuff, and he just looks down and starts writing on the ground, and then they press the issue, and he looks up at him and says, "Whichever of you is without sin, cast the first stone," and then he starts writing on the ground again, and and famously. Uh, you know, people have said, we don't know what he was writing because the Bible doesn't say, but there's a good chance he was writing names and sins, hmm. you know, and just, just going down through it. And they all left from the oldest to the youngest, it said. And then he turns to her and he says, woman, where are your accusers? And she says, I have none. And he goes, I don't accuse you either. And then he says, go and stop sinning. And so he, he deals with this, with the sin in her life, but he doesn't get all up in her face about it. And I think, I think that a lot of times people are all up in the in the face of the wrong people about sin. When mm-hmm. when Jesus was in somebody's face about sin, it was because they were religious and they were hypocrites. And um, most often, when when I uh, uh, non Christians, um, they love me or hate me, <laughs> you know, basically because what I do is I just tell them the truth and. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm interested in them coming into a real relationship with Christ and to come into a real relationship with Christ. You got to understand that um, your sin is is something that's offensive to God. And most non-Christians don't have a problem with that. Most of them don't because they recognize that they're outside of a relationship with God. And, and so um, I don't I don't have to spend a lot of time talking to an unbeliever about their their sinfulness. In fact, a lot of times I don't have to, I don't have to spend any time at all. I don't even have to talk to them about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you, usually the people who are, who are griping about that are Christians who are flaky, frankly. And so it's always been the case. It's always been that kind of situation. And so um, I've been flaky before too. And I've had people say to me, Hey, what are you doing, man? And um, there are people who 
uh, appreciate that. The, you know, the book of Proverbs talks about uh, people who can take correction and people who can take, you know, who understand wisdom and, and that kind of thing. And then there are people who just want to do what they want to do and they don't care about the consequences. And, um, you know, we've, we've always had that. And so um, I, I, I keep my attitude straight by um, looking at what, what the Bible has to say about where my life was before I was a Christian, where it is now. There's a, there's a passage in Titus chapter 3 that speaks to this whole thing. And it's specifically talking about um, our attitude towards un, unbelievers. It says, Titus 3.1 uh, says, Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of uh, God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And then uh, the passage goes on. And so whenever I'm, I'm looking at, at, at somebody who's messed up in, in an area, um, specifically I'm, I'm talking about people who are non-Christians, uh, whenever I'm looking at them, uh, I realize that the, the only difference between them and me is Jesus. It's mm -hmm. the only difference. And so that, I think that's how you keep your, your head straight on those things. And again, you know, I, I, I don't have to spend a lot of time talking to non-believers about their sin because usually they know that they're in sin. It's, it's usually the believers who are justifying sin and justifying, uh, you know, a compromising relationship with God that are doing all the barking about that kind of thing. And so, um, uh, again, I've been in positions where I had the same attitude, but I had guys who were faithful to share the truth of, of the word of God with me, uh, in an uncompromising manner. And I had to deal with it. And so I think a lot of more, a lot more Christians need to deal with stuff, uh, because we, we need to be a witness to the world. We got, you know, it's like, it, we're, uh, I think that a lot of times Christians are sitting around, you know, doing their thing, uh, you know, as if the world isn't going to hell. And we, we need to be paying attention to the people who are around us. Uh, there's, there's a purity that a, that a believer needs to have. There's a godliness that a believer needs to have. There's a, there's a blamelessness that a believer needs to have so that the world can be reached. And um, if people uh, don't like that standard, you know, I'm, I'm not the one who came up with the standard. It's, it's Jesus who came up with that. And, and so we need to have lifestyles that, that represent that. And so, um, again, uh, I've been on both ends of that whole thing. And I had, I had godly guys who came up and corrected me and, um, you know, I didn't always take the correction at the, at the first moment, but obviously I did, you know, in the end. And so I, I think that on, on the one hand, I need to be somebody who, uh, has compassion towards people. And then on the other hand, um, I'm, I'm not going to compromise the word of God or the gospel or the, the truth of God's word. Um, just because it will make people like me, yeah. you know, you, you just got to do it like Jesus did. And so, uh, religious people who love the Lord, love Jesus, non-religious people who, uh, were in their sin and, wanted out, loved Jesus. Religious people who didn't love the Lord and uh, wanted to stay in their sin had a real problem with them. And non-religious people who uh, could care less about the things of God are the ones who put him to death, you know, and obviously the religious folks were involved in that whole thing too. And it's going to be the same thing, you know, uh, with us. So is it a different approach towards you know, how you would address that in, say, like preaching versus one-on-one -on -one as well. I mean, obviously, when you're talking to someone individually, you might, you know, address issues differently. Well, absolutely. You know, when, when I'm up front preaching, I you know, I'm in, in front of a whole group of people and um, I'm going through a passage and the passages just say what the passages mm -hmm. say. And a lot of times um, I've had, you know, I've had people get up and walk out of church and, I you know, I see them walk out of church. They're going yeah. to the bathroom. Yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of times, uh, if if I'm going through a passage and it says something gnarly, I you know, I just wait for the guys who are going to get up and walk out, you know, because they're they're not going to like it, and that doesn't mean that I'm not going to share it because it's it's what the Word of God has to say, and so I need to be, I need to be ready for that. On on the other hand, 
um, when I'm talking with someone one on one, usually I'm I'm hearing their story and I'm uh, um, I'm you know I'm I'm not I'm not teaching out of the Bible in a situation. Um, what I'm doing is I'm I'm just having a conversation with somebody, and a lot of times what'll end up happening is they'll they'll state something and the, or they'll do something or you know something will come up that um, looks like it needs to be addressed. And I don't address everything. You know, it's like it's not my job to play Holy Spirit. Um, but there, there are times when believers um, have done things in front of me kind of to see if I, uh, if I would say anything. And um, when I recognize that, I always say something. Yeah. And usually I start off with asking questions. So what do you think about that? You know, where, you know, what is this? What is that? Well, and then they'll, ma they'll make a statement and then I'll go to the word and, and go, well, Jesus had this to say about that. What do you think about that? And then, you know, we have a conversation. Uh, but most times I, most times I, I don't even have to do that. Yeah. Most people, when, when they're talking to me, they're, God's got them pretty much primed and they're ready to go. And, and I don't have to say a lot of things. You know, I, I rarely have to say a bunch of things to people one-on-one -on -one about their sin. Yeah. Usually they're coming in and they, they just want to fix it. So, but. you know, I was just thinking too, cause you know, when you're preaching to an audience, like you said, there's almost an aspect where you're going to be faithful to the word of God. But I feel like sometimes people take, you know, the example from up front and they just go try to, you know, you, you know, preach to people the same way that you would get preached to in a sermon is not received well. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why? You don't do that, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, and I just, you know, yeah. just encourage people that are trying to share with their friends and family. You're like there's a different approach, way different approach than when you're pre right. preaching to just the general audience. It's I've never stood up on the, on the chair at my dinner table and started <laughs> preaching to my family. Uh, there, I mean, there have been times when, when I've, uh, when I've talked with people and things have gotten heated. Um, but the reason is not because I made them heated. It's because, uh, uh, people were um, trying to put me in a situation where I was going to have to compromise. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't, they got mad. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's like that. 